Cody Rhodes has invited Stone Cold Steve Austin to WrestleMania 41. Some SmackDown stars have been advertised for Raw's Netflix debut, and a TNA standout has officially retired from taking indie dates to focus on something new. Find out who this is in a little tickle. Bong! Bong! Bong, Jack! The Undertaker's appearance at WrestleMania 40 to help Cody Rhodes take down the bloodline in that big old, dirty, filthy main event had some people thinking it was going to be Stone Stone Cold Steve Austin in The Undertaker's place because of of the side of a lorry in the build-up to the show. We had Cena, Austin, but then Cena was at WrestleMania, Austin was not. No. Oh, hell yeah, son. It makes sense. The side of a lorry, it makes complete sense in this context. Now, Cody Rhodes himself over the weekend has been speaking with Adrian Hernandez at ComplexCon, where the topic of Stone Cold Steve Austin, that guy who might have been at WrestleMania but who wasn't, that came up in conversation. Uh, yeah, Cody <laughs> said, uh, yeah, so the invitation is there. Still there for next year's WrestleMania. Mm. He's also not far. I mean, we could helicopter him three hours away, Great American Bash style. I think Stone Cold Steve Austin being, you know, we're talking inside here, but this babyface individual, and I'm assuming everyone listening went, what's he on about? <gasps> speaking a different language. Uh, being this babyface individual, and we're back in this unbelievable era where there are good guys in the business again. He was the ultimate babyface who had the company on his back. I would just like him to be around to see how we're doing. I want him to know hey, we're doing this Friday, we're doing this on Saturday, and I hope he's proud of us all because he really has set the table for us, him and The Rock, in a way that we can all eat so fruitfully. So I'd love for Steve to do anything. 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 Wrestle Cody Rhodes. Take the title from Cody Rhodes. I would like... Anything. I'd like for Steve to be in a, to have been at last year's WrestleMania. It still worked with The Undertaker oh, doing yeah. it, um, but with The Rock, I, yeah, no, everyone sees Austin as a more historic rival of The Rocks than, than Mark, but um, it still worked. But surely if they wanted to, they could find some way. You can't have a WrestleMania and not be able to squeeze Austin in if he wants to. Yeah. yeah. It depends what he wants to do. It would be interesting to see him wrestle again, because obviously WrestleMania 38 now, it's lo- that long ago. Oh my God. WrestleMania 38 went so well with Kevin Owens that would he want to have the little chance of maybe the lasting legacy of that match being hampered somewhat? Oh, you think he might even to have a match? Ooh, oh, why wouldn't you? You still yeah. call Steve Austin do anything. It went well, that one, with Kevin Owens. You're very right, but uh, that, even if it wasn't a match, they could have him. Triple H doesn't even care about the wrestling anymore. It's all about the stories. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I think that's... It's nice of Cody to keep that on the table, but I wouldn't... As I said, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him, like Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> that's how everyone feels about Cody Rhodes. But, yeah, let us know in the comments down below what you would like to see Stone Cold Steve Austin do, mm. if anything, at WrestleMania 41 in April, March, April. April, March. April, March, April. Also, in the interview with Aaron Han- Adrian Hernandez, sorry, it's Complex Con over the weekend. That was almost a very different person. <laughs> Cody Rhodes was asked about The Rock and what yeah. he could be doing at WrestleMania 41, Jack. He's, he said Dwayne Johnson is different from the final boss. His outside-the-box thinking with Nick Khan and Triple H is part of WWE's record era, part of this WWE Netflix era. So whether he's in the ring or not, he is very much still involved with what happens at 41. I know when he comes back. I know who he'll come looking for. I know what to expect. He also says, but what, what, I, can, what I can say about WrestleMania 41 is keep the rumors going. Keep them churning. Enjoy the discourse. But I think what you get, what you will get, will surprise you all. That last bit is very, very, very exciting. I went, does that <laughs> Count as Cody then playing down. The, he's, he's made a distinction there. He's gone, well, the, the Rock and Dwayne, the final boss and Dwayne Johnson, they're two very separate people and Dwayne's involved behind the scenes. I thought he was playing it down, the chances of The Rock coming back. But then he goes, I know who he's going to come looking for. Yeah, and you would assume it would be him after that angle they did on the Raw after WrestleMania this year when with he the watch. gave him the thing. Yeah, oh, the watch. Was it was it? a watch. Yeah, was well, a watch. they didn't overtly say it was a watch, but people worked it out it was it's a like watch, didn't they? A gift that he'd been given yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's The Rock coming back for the title. Uh, but it's interesting that Cody seems to have his plans already locked in yeah. in the way he's answered that last bit, the, the, the bit there. Um, uh, but there could be something else happening. There could maybe. Uh, I'd like on one hand I'd like to see it happen because I, I didn't like how The Rock pinned him on night one mm. and then Cody won on night two but in the back of everyone's mind it was like yeah but The Rock pinned him and The Rock made sure it was in the back of everyone's mind with that angle on Raw but on the other hand I wouldn't trust The Rock to come back and lose to Cody no, you'd trust anyone you do no, I don't trust anybody <laughs> I see you've mentioned the Cody lie down here which has uh, been yeah mentioned it's recently. a new term that's taken mm. over the internet over the last few months I think it's Cody just he doesn't like he doesn't lie overtly but he just in, embellishes everything yeah to the point where it almost becomes a lie we're not making this up he's talked about it himself on interviews yes, so it's not, it's not just our invention uh, uh, you've said there could be rest to speak or could just be one of those Cody lies that we are learning more about as the days go on we learn more and more more about getting lies. exposed about these Cody lies as time goes yes. on 
Anyway, what about the Raw debut on Netflix on January the 6th? In the first news video today, we spoke about a special celebrity who will be on the show. We also spoke about where the show will be happening. But now we have news of SmackDown superstars who are advertised for the show. Oh, WWE has now shed four graphics ahead of tickets going on sale this Friday, November 22nd, seemingly confirming four top stars for the show, for the show on, on January 6th. Yeah. Uh, the stars featured in the graphics were John Cena. We already know about that one. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Bianca Belair. Oh, just Bianca Belair, not but, Jade Cargill. No, yeah. Oh, aye. Oh, very interesting. Obviously, Bianca Belair at the moment is a floating champion, but when she's not a tag team champion, she is a bona fide SmackDown yeah, superstar. Yeah. Cody Rhodes, bona fide SmackDown superstar. The other lad, Roman Reigns, bona fide SmackDown superstar, all appearing on the Red Show. This cannot be. But I can't say I'm too surprised because that's such a big show. The first, the first launch on Netflix, the, the launch show, and everything. They're going to want to stack that full yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't change the posters to advertise people who weren't there. The rest. Slings never does that, does it? <laughs> it does a lot. But in this instance, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see all those stars and maybe even more. Including on the show. celebrities, potentially. Yes. At least one, at least, anyway. Mm. We learned that on News Video One. Elsewhere, arguably bigger than the debut of Raw on Netflix in January, is NXT tomorrow night. Mm. Huge, I've put in here, huge, massive, walloping biggins in terms of the old Iron Survivor qualifiers, Jack. Who we got on the men's ranks? On the men's side, we've got Nathan Fraser versus Eddie Thorne. Well, you'd think Nathan Fraser would win with the under the bubbling storyline that is the Fraxion breakup. We already know that Javon Evans is qualified for the match. Mm. With Nathan Fraser in the match as well, it's just going to be... Oh, it's going to be he, a literal hurricane in that ring. If he can get past Eddie Thorpe, of course. On the women's side, we've got Zaria versus Ren Sinclair. That'll be Zaria. Yep. And, uh, this is this is groundbreaking, this match. Stephanie Vakia versus Jada Parker. Steve versus Jada. Mm. You'd think Steve would be the favourite because she is Steve from Gillian Steve, but Jada Parker has been on a roll recently. I'm quite sad that this match is happening because I'd want to see both of them yeah. in the Iron Survivor match. Who loses, though? I, if I was a betting man, I'd bet that Jada loses, but you never know. Because of the enemies that she's made, Stephanie Vakir could be taken out by Cora or Roxanne or someone mm. in the match. It could be It could be a little switcheroo. The, the one for Zarya. Could, uh, could Jordan Grace get involved after that Aaron Spear last week? Well, well, if we know anything, we know that wrestlers don't watch the show back and realise it was a mistake. No, so no. Maybe, maybe Jordan Grace will take that personally. Yeah. yeah maybe. Hope the Ren Sinclair. She is a shooter. Be careful, everybody. Yes. We end this news video today with big breaking... Well, no, I mean breaking news. It happened last night. Josh Alexander is the TNA standout. We teased at the start of the video. who has announced his retirement from all things indie going forward. Forward and has hit at something big on his horizons. Yeah, this announcement was made in the ring during Northern Crown Wrestling's live show in Toronto on Sunday. Uh, Josh Alexander later also shared a statement on Twitter or X thanking promotion. I don't know why I said like that. <laughs> thanking promotions for booking him and urging fans to continue to support indie wrestling. He says, regardless of what may or may not be in my future, after talking with my family, I've made the decision to stop taking indie dates. I've loved my time in the independence these past 20 years. I've done amazing things, worked with amazing people, and got to travel the world performing in front of amazing fans. That being said, I'm tired of the hustle. It's time for the next crop to step up and fill whatever void I may leave behind in the Canadian scene and says, it's not goodbye, I'll just see you later. And his last indie date will be for Prestige Wrestling on January the 11th. Mm. A name often touted with bigger promotions, you might say, than TNA. Right. But he never quite made it there. Is he going to go there now? Well, there's that whole background, isn't there? Of it, it looked like he was going to leave last year, but then they, they sort of triggered a, a contract extension, mm. which he didn't... I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm putting words in his mouth, but from his social media activity, he didn't seem too thrilled by that. It felt like he was being held captive. Yes. To a deal he'd signed, but not really thought would come to fruition. Yeah. Um, maybe this is him winding down ahead of moving to one of those bigger companies. Who knows? Maybe. Or he could be getting more full-time with TNA, just becoming an exclusive TNA. Because I think ex exclusivity is a thing that would play a big part in this decision, just reading off the rest of his social media off the not-too-distant past. Yes, and part of it, as you mentioned there in his statement, it seems like he's talked about with his family. He gets to spend more time with his family, and that, yeah. that, that makes a lot of sense. All the best to Josh Alexander. Yes. And all the best to you if you go to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic is easy for me to say I'll try again Matthew I can see why he struggles yeah. patreon.com forward slash cultaholic mm. if you sign up for any tier that is any tier on that Patreon you get entered into a draw where you could win my massive title which I introduced because I wanted to hold the biggest title in the world of professional wrestling I'm not competing for that title anymore therefore we're going to send it to anybody who signs up for the Patreon no matter where you are around the world wow 
Wow. That massive thing in the post. How we're going to do it, I have no idea. But I don't know either. Try and find out by signing up at patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. The complete history of TNA is on the channel right now. More things will happen this week because it is an AEW pay-per-view week and you know what we do these weeks. Yes, we do the predictions, we do the... the and all the other things as well. Yeah, more right. Pitches. Happened, pitches, what happened at WTF, live stream reactions, of course, with yourself and Sam. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm away this week. Oh, who's I'm it? at a wedding for the next seven, well, seven days from Sunday to Sunday. Saturday, so, whatever. I can't do it. Where someone's stepping it? in. In Ipswich. Oh, lovely. Aye. Oh. It's miles away from here. Yeah. So someone's stepping in. I don't know who. I'll try to try and work it out. Oh, fair enough. I like call Lewis Capaldi. We'll have all the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll have all the all the content as usual, though. So don't you worry. And stay tuned to cultaholic.com for all the news as well. Yes. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.